Hi, there's Mark Meckler for craftingastrategy.com. I want to discuss four basic criteria for evaluating a strategy and whether or not it's going to work in your situation. I'm going to give you four elements. The first element I'm going to call, talk about consistency. The second element I'm going to talk about is consonance. The third, feasibility and the fourth, advantage. I'm taking these four categories from a famous paper written by Richard Remelt a number of years ago, about 30, 35 years ago. I think it was called Evaluating a Business Strategy. What is consistency? Consistency, what you ask is, does this strategy explicitly or implicitly imply any mutually inconsistent goals or programs or policies within your organization? Or does the strategy enhance organizational coherence and coordination? We'd like uh, something that we put in place that it actually enhances organizational coherence and enhances organizational coordination and doesn't cause problems with organizational co coherence or coordination. And sometimes we put strategies or tactics in place that pit maybe one department against another department or sometimes one important person against another important person. Or sometimes uh, you try to do something that's good for one area, it turns out it's not quite so good for another area. It makes people in production really struggle because you decided to have um, a six pack that had six different beers in it. And then all of a sudden production scheduling becomes incredibly difficult. So these kinds of things where there are real challenges to coordination and to coherence in your organization we want to minimize those things and we want to maximize those sorts of things that enhance coordination and coherence within your organization. We call that consistency and what we mean is internal co 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 consistency. Consonance. Consonance is kind of like internal consistency but think of it as consistency with the external environment, things outside of your company. So you ask to what extent does this strategy represent a direct and well-fitted response to the external environment, to what's going on outside in our market, to what's going outside with supply, and what's going outside with demand, and, and the season, and the economy, and so forth. Uh, any critical changes occurring external to your company, to what extent does the strategy kind of fit well with what's going on in the world? And, uh, well, that might sound obvious, well, certainly it is, but sometimes we get really caught up in what would be good for us and we forget to think how well does this really fit the world and changes that are going to be occurring, um, whether it's seasonal changes and so forth. So, I mean, obviously we wouldn't start making our uh, winter white when it's springtime and everybody wants a nice bright IPA or something like that. Um, that would be the wrong time to do our winter brew. That's a seasonal thing. On the other hand, if the economy was really struggling, we'd see if we couldn't come up with some way to brew something that was a little less costly for folks. Feasibility, third category. Feasibility, it's just like what it sounds like if you know English well, and uh, the explanation for the word is something like that. To what extent does this strategy either overtax available resources or create the kinds of problems that the organization has had kind of a poor track record for adequately solving in the past. So if we've had a hard time doing this kind of thing or solving these kind of problems in the past, getting new customers or um, uh, creating new products or uh, uh, dealing with distributors, then we probably wouldn't want to assume that we're going to be good at it in the future. Furthermore, if the new strategy demands resources that we haven't got extra of, that's not so great. So the idea is, with feasibility, sometimes almost everything that you go and do takes resources. Time and uh, space to do it, and uh, raw product to put in, and human resources and technology resources, your tools and your tanks and your kitchens and your ovens and so forth and it's going to take uh, um, knowledge that you uh, have and it's just going to take a uh, motivation and all these resources that that are needed to go do anything you have to think about do I have any extra of any of that 
Uh, and if you don't have extra, that would mean that this strategy uh, might imply that you have to get new resources, maybe new employees or new money or new space or find extra time. And if you haven't got those, it's really difficult on the feasibility side. The best sorts of things are new tactics or strategies for which you can use existing Slack resources. Resources you already have extra of. Maybe you're not using your place at night and you can create an extra shift. Advantage, that's the fourth category from Richard Rumelt. And that is kind of this idea that if we implement this and we do it right, so uh, we're, it, it, it's feasible enough, we get it going, and uh, turns out it is consonant with the external environment, it doesn't create terrible internal inconsistencies, and we actually implement this new strategy or tactic, how much difference will it really make in terms of our uh, uh, competitive advantage or in terms of our unique value proposition? Uh, how much net value will it really create for, for users? Um, in their minds. Uh, will it lead to superior innovation? Uh, will it lead to superior quality or better responsiveness or reduced costs? Um, to what extent does it really get any of those done? It's a really important question to ask because sometimes something sounds really great, very feasible, and in fact it even sounds to you like it would matter a lot. Now please refer to the uh, videos and and uh, white papers that we have on the idea of value. And remember, we're talking it's got to create value to either value to the customer so that they'll want to purchase more or come more frequently, so revenue goes up, or they'll pay a little more so your margins go up, or it's going to cost you a little less so your margins go up because your costs are down. So either you have to be able to charge more at the same cost, it has to cost less at the same price, or for the same, you have to be able to sell more of those things and create more revenue. You don't really have a great advantage if it doesn't lead to one of those things over time and consistently. So those are the four areas for evaluating a strategy according to Richard Rumelt. It is consistency, consonance, feasibility, and advantage. This is Mark Meckler for Crafting a Strategy. I hope this is helpful.